to start this repair, I want to first tie off the steering wheel. We're going to be disconnecting the steering shaft, of course, so the steering wheel is going to be able to freely spin, and you don't want that to happen, because if it does spin and overextend the clock spring, which is right behind the airbag, it will break it, and then you're going to have to replace it. And obviously, you don't want to have to do that for no reason. So make sure you tie it off. I used a bungee cord and just went right underneath the seat and hooked it. This is going to prevent it from overextending and spinning a bunch of times. Before I move on to taking anything apart in the car, I'm going to remove the protective plastic caps on the new steering rack, and I'm just going to prepare this for installation. And the way I'm going to do that is by centering the new rack. So I'm going to take a pair of locking pliers, lock them on here, not very tight. You don't want to damage this shaft, but just enough to hold on. And then what you want to do is spin the rack all the way to one end, just all the way. Now I can see that my pliers are basically lined up with a tie rod and I want to count the turns from lock to lock. So at this point the rack is pushed out all the way that way. I want to turn the locking pliers until it's pushed out all the way this way and count how many turns that takes. One, two, three. Okay, so about three and a third turns. Now I want to divide that by two and that's going to give me now I want to divide that by two and that's going to help me center the rack left to right. So three and a third divided by two is about 1.67. So that's just over one and a half turns. So I'll go one full turn, then half a turn is going to be over here, and then just a little bit extra. And now the rack is centered. And the reason it's important to do this is because once you attach the steering shaft, if your, steel, if your steering wheel is centered, but your rack is not, you're gonna have the wheels pointing in different directions with the steering wheel straight. Now, if you're one tooth off, yes, you can adjust that with an alignment on the tie rods, but you wanna be as perfectly aligned as possible on this steering shaft here. All right, so let's start taking the old steering rack out. The steering rack is located at the back of this front frame here, and I'm gonna start by removing the steering shaft off of the rack, so that joint right there needs to come off. With a 12 millimeter, remove this pinch bolt here. So because that bolt broke, I'm also going to take that upper bolt out. That's going to allow me to take the whole joint out. Yes, I can pull the joint off of the rack, but I need to take that whole joint out so I can fix this bolt, get a new one. To do that, I'm going to have to remove that pinch bolt up there, and that's also 12 millimeter. that one came out. Next take a pry bar and from underneath just hammer upwards on this whole joint and it should separate. So oh, here's the situation. That area is not breaking free. So, but I did manage to get the upper shaft disconnected from this joint. So what I'm gonna do is at this point, drop the whole steering rack with that joint and then separate it once it's on my bench. So the next thing I wanna do is disconnect a bolt that holds these lines onto the steering rack. It's a 12 millimeter. Okay, make sure the lines break free. Next, I'm going to disconnect the inner tie rod from the outer tie rod because the new rack comes with inner tie rods. The factory size for this nut is 24 millimeter. This one's already been replaced, so I'm using an adjustable wrench because it's way bigger than the wrenches that I have. So break that free and then disconnect the inner from the outer by just unthreading it. If you wanna disconnect the outer tie rod from the knuckle, go ahead but I feel like it's just as easy to do this. 
There we go, that's disconnected. And do the same to the other side. With both tie rod ends unhooked, I wanna disconnect these lines first. Use a 16 millimeter flare nut wrench for best results. If you use an open-ended wrench, it might strip. And this wasn't even tight. There will be fluid coming out, so make sure you have a collection bucket ready to catch all this fluid. This other line is a 17 millimeter. There you go, disconnect that one as well. I'm going to start by disconnecting this bolt here. It's a 19 millimeter and I can't get to the top of it with an air gun, so I'm gonna have to do it by hand. Here it is. There is also a 19 millimeter bolt on that side and a 19 millimeter nut, and then a 22 millimeter nut right here, and that's everything that's still holding the steering rack in, so let's get all those out. When I do remove all the hardware, this rack will not fall because it's still sitting on two studs, so there's a stud here, and then the other nut on the other side has a stud as well, so it's not just gonna fall on you, which is nice. Again, 19 millimeter for these two. On this side, this is actually a bolt, and I'm holding the bolt head on this side with a 22 millimeter wrench, 22 millimeter socket on the nut side. I'm gonna drive this bolt out of here. Gonna remove the bracket and bushing off of this side. Make sure these two lines are not caught underneath the rack. Pull the rack down on one side. And on the other, it's separated from the steering shaft. Here's your old rack. Now let's get this joint out. Well, I got updates. That's not coming off. It is completely seized on here. I've tried to heat it up and beat it off of here. It is just stuck. Like there's no way, there's no way this is coming off. And if I do get it off, it's just gonna be completely mangled and unusable. So I got me a new piece here uh, from the Toyota dealership. So this is a dealer part only. So I can install that on the new rack. So coming back to our steering shaft here that comes out of the car. I'm gonna try and clean it up a little bit. And I'm going to lather on some anti-seize that will hopefully prevent rust from building up and it'll also help that joint come off much easier in the future if it ever has to be serviced again. And because I can, I'm going to reconnect this joint right now. It only lines up one way, so make sure the splines are lined up. On this side of it, there's gonna be a cutout. That's where the bolt goes through, so that's what I'm going by. And on this side here, you'll see a spline that is thicker than all the other splines. That has to match up with the center on this side. There we go, perfect. If it's one spline off, it won't fit. So I'm gonna start the bolt in, but I'm not going to tighten it until everything is secured. As you can see, it has lots of wiggle room, which is exactly what I want. Um, and I got new bolts, by the way, for the top and the bottom. And I got new bolts, by the way, for the top and the bottom. And if you're interested, those are eight by one, two, five thread. And for the top, the length is about 25 millimeters. The bottom needs a slightly longer one, um, about 30, I think. I'm going to put this bolt in 
and then I have that stud right there, and these two are going to help me line up the steering rack and hold it in place. Don't forget this bracket and bushing you need to put on, transfer it from the old one. And at this point, slide the rack up into place. Make sure it slides in here. Once you have it in right here where the bolt is, go ahead and push the bolt through. That'll hold it in for you. Make sure it's up and over this stud right here. And then insert the bracket over the bushing. All right, make sure it's seated all the way. Then come back to this side and drive the bolt all the way through. Reinstall your nuts and bolts that hold the steering rack in and start all the threads. Make sure nothing gets cross-threaded. This one here is tricky, but doable. There we go, that fell right in. All right, they're all started. I'm gonna snug them all up and then we'll torque them. They have different torque specs. Hold the bolt with the 22 and snug up the nut with the 22. And do the 19 millimeter nut and the 19 millimeter bolt. And finally, this 19 millimeter bolt right here. And this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it all the way because I won't be able to torque this. So I'm just going for tight. Uh, the torque for this is supposed to be 96 foot pounds. Again, I can't get a torque wrench in there, so I'm just going to make it as tight as I can by hand and kind of torque it by feel, so to say. Quick tip is if you're pressing hard up against a surface and you don't want your knuckles busted, press with a flat palm. All right. I feel like that's about as tight as that should go. This big bolt with the 22 millimeter head gets torqued to, well, the nut, I should say, gets torqued to 122 foot-pounds. All right. And these two get torqued to 96 foot-pounds. And like I said, the center bolt is 96 foot-pounds also, except that, well, I can't torque it. Next, I'd like to get the this steering joint connected to the steering rack, so I'm gonna remove my bolt that I placed up there so I can secure it and hold it in place. I'm going to place it down on the steering rack first. You kind of have to guess where that's gonna wanna line up. If you push down on this, and then you can kind of twist this, push up on the steering shaft, and those two should fall into place. Perfect. Slide this so that the bolt cutout is where it's supposed to be and insert your top bolt first. Just start it, you don't have to snug it or anything. All right, and then make sure this pivots up and down, perfect. Um, I went ahead and put any seize all over the uh, lower joint as well. Again, that's gonna prevent it from seizing in the future. All right, and now if you see this cutout right here, that's where the lower bolt actually has to go. So pull this down. You want to pull down as much as you can, just so you can line up this bolt. All right, once you have it started, it should look something like that. And I'm going to torque these, but I'm gonna first run them down and snug them up. These two bolts call for 26 foot-pounds. Don't forget about this bolt right here that holds the lines onto the rack. Make sure that's nice and snug. The next step is going to be reattaching these lines here. So take off your yellow caps. Those are just there to prevent debris from going in during transportation. And I'm gonna remove my temporary cap off of this line. Go ahead and plug them both in. 
and start on the fittings. These fittings can be a little bit tricky to start on, but if you just move the line around, you'll eventually get it. All right, let's snug them up. So these were the fittings with the two different sizes. One was a 16, the other one was a 17. Okay, this lower one was the 16 millimeter. And make sure that's nice and tight. Of course, you don't want to over tighten these, but make sure they don't leak. And this upper one is the 17 millimeter one. I guess I should have tightened the upper one first because now it's a little more difficult to get to it with a full size wrench, but I have a stubby wrench here. I'm just going to use that. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. Clean up your mess here. The last step underneath here is to connect the outer tie rod to the inner tie rod. Like I said before, you can just take the outer tie rod off the knuckle if you wish to do so. Now, if your boot right here um, is twisting, it's not sliding on the inner tie rod, you have to take this clamp off and put some grease on there. I did that even though my boot was already spinning because this is gonna help it not seize on the tie rod in the future. So it'll help out your alignment professional when you go to get an alignment. And of course, this whole procedure and adjustment is based on the fact that your steering rack is still centered, which it was when I put it in. And so assuming your steering wheel is straight and tied down like it should be, I'm going to kind of just eyeball the alignment right now. You can count the threads on the old rack and, uh, and go by that, just to count how many threads are exposed or how many threads go in, whatever you wanna do. But either way, it's still not gonna be perfect. So I'm just going to eyeball the alignment, make sure the wheels are visually straight. And then of course, right after this job, I'm gonna go down to the local alignment shop and have them professionally align the, uh, the vehicle. So right about there is where I wanna be. Again, it's not perfect, but it's close enough to drive to your local shop and get it aligned. Now snug up your jam nut and lock it in place. This new one is a 27 millimeter, so make sure you have a big wrench or some adjustable pliers or something. All right, snug that up and then pull back on the tie rod just a little bit. You don't want it to be uh, jammed up like that. Your power steering fluid reservoir is located on the passenger side, right next to the air filter housing. So open it up. It's empty because, well, most of the fluid drained out when we replaced the rack and Toyotas always take automatic transmission fluid for power steering, preferably Dexron type ATF, but honestly, if you don't have it, you can use something else. Go ahead and fill it up with some ATF. Now, don't make it full all the way. I'm gonna go about three quarters, stop right here, and what I will do now is go inside the vehicle and turn the steering wheel left and right, lock to lock, that's going to manually push fluid through the lines and it will suck this fluid down. So keep an eye on that. Oh, and I, of course at this time you can remove your steering wheel hold down. All right, so I'm gonna go left all the way and then right all the way. My wheels are still up in the air. They are not touching the ground. So this is full lock to the left. I'm gonna go to the right. You can see air is coming up and the level should be going down. Just keep on going left and right. And after I do this about two, three times, lock to lock, I'm gonna go and top it off again. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until no more air comes out. Only after that will I start the engine. And the reason for doing it this way is so that I don't run the pump dry or with air bubbles in it. I want as much fluid in the system as possible. And that's why I'm manually bleeding it first. Here we go again, all the way to the left, all and then, and then all the way to the right. Fill it up again. Once you don't see any more air bubbles, at that point you'll be clear to start the engine. And as soon as you start it, quickly go check the fluid because most of the time it'll get sucked down fast even though you have already manually bled it and you don't want to run the pump dry, that'll ruin it. 
So as soon as you start it, go check the level, fill it up. You'll see several lines here. These are the lines for when the fluid is hot, and right here is for when it's cold. I would just fill it up about here. You can always take some out later, but you're trying to have it as full as possible, but not too full, so that air can rise up to the top and you can bleed the system fully. Now, once you have started the engine and topped it off, do the same thing, lock to lock, left to right, several times until you, until you have no more air coming out of here. And if you hear noise, like a whining noise, that means there is air inside the pump. So you have to keep going. If after a few turns it doesn't quiet down, shut it off, do it manually again, turn it back on, run the engine, and do it with the power steering pump activated, and keep going. Make sure you keep it full at all times, and eventually it should bleed out. At the very end, when you're completely done, make sure you are not over full, and then cap it off. Take it for a road test. And after you come back from your road test, double check the fluid again, because sometimes there are little air pockets that, that you won't know about until after you've driven the vehicle.